Hi everyone, my name is Elias and today I'll be showing you guys how to use the Carry Bio 100 UV-Vis Spectral Photometer which is currently located in the Inorganic Lab. So this is what the, what the instrument looks like. The very first thing you want to do is turn it on. So just flip the switch right there and you want to let this thing warm up for at least 20 minutes. So just keep track of the time and then later what in the meantime, we can open up the software and set up our method. So that's what the software icon looks like. Just click it, open it up, and you should see a display that looks something like this. Click Setup, and then under the Carry tab, make sure you're in nanometers mode, and then adjust the starting and stopping um, wavelengths depending on what range you're interested in scanning over. Make sure you're in absorbance mode, and then those are pretty typical Y-min and Y-max values right there. Same thing for scan controls. Um, those three values right there are pretty standard. Uh, make sure that yours looks something like that. Under the options tab, make sure two is in that field right there. And then make sure you're in double beam mode. Make sure auto lamps off is not selected. Once again, make sure signal to noise mode is not selected. And then under display options, I like to select individual data just because that makes um, the spectrums easier to look at. Under baseline, make sure baseline correction is selected. And then for accessories one, two, and three, make sure that nothing underneath those tabs is selected because currently there are no accessories hooked up to the instrument, so it wouldn't make sense to set up accessories that don't actually exist. Under reports, give yourself a name as the operator. You can add a comment if you'd like. And then under options, uh, I wouldn't really mess with that for now because I'm not printing out the spectrums today. If you were, I would change them as necessary. Make sure peak types is all peaks. Go to peak information. Peak type is peaks, all peaks. And then peak threshold should be 0 0.1. And then select X label. You could also select X and Y labels if you think that's easier. And then under auto convert, this is really important. Make sure that you select, um, select for ASCII CSV so that you generate um, a CSV file in addition to um, the raw data file. And then under auto store, select um, storage on and then prompt at start. Hit OK. And then here I'm showing you guys two different types of cuvettes. So on the left we have a quartz cuvette and on the right we have a PMMA, um, also known as acrylic cuvette. Um, the difference between the two is that the quartz cuvette will allow you to scan in the UV range, whereas the PMMA cuvette will actually block out UV radiation. So just make sure that if you're doing stuff in the ultraviolet range that you're using a quartz cuvette. Um, otherwise, you could just go ahead and use a PMMA or glass cuvette. Um, so right here, I'm just filling up two clean PMMA cuvettes with DI water, and I'm filling them up about two thirds of the way up. And then I'm gonna grab a Kim wipe, and I'm gonna wipe down um, the sides of the cuvette really thoroughly to make sure that there are no fingerprints or anything else um, on them. And then you'll notice that the cuvettes have um, two different sides. There's an opaque side and a transparent side. So the light is actually going to be shining through the transparent sides. So make sure that the transparent sides are really, really nice and clean. So once I got that taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and load both of them into the two different uh, cell compartments. I'm going to put one in the reference compartment, making sure that the transparent sides are facing horizontal to me, such that the light can actually pass through. Um, and then same thing with the sample compartment. Close that up, and then I can go ahead and zero the instrument. Once the instrument is zeroed, I can collect the baseline, so just click baseline. And then it's going to prompt us to do exactly what we just did, to put our blanks into um, both sample compartments. So just hit OK, and then it should start to collect the baseline. And then once the baseline is collected, you should see the word baseline in the top left corner. So now I'm going to remove the cuvette in the sample compartment, not the one in the reference compartment. I'm going to keep that there. And then I'm going to go ahead and dump that out into the sink since it's just water. And then I'm going to let that cuvette dry. I'm going to take a separate clean cuvette and I'm going to load my first sample 
um, in there. Just gonna take a Pasteur pipette and fill it up about two thirds of the way up. So now I guess is a good time to mention um, that this instrument is a double beam spectral photometer, which is why we have two separate compartments, a reference and a sample compartment. What that does um, is that um, it allows you to basically uh, cancel out the, the signal from the blank in your sample um, with, each, uh, with each spectrum that you collect. Um, and so how that works is that the spectral photometer has one lamp and that, um, that light is being split up into two beams. One of them is um, passing through the, the blank, the reference compartment, and the other is passing through the actual sample compartment. So you just saw me there clean the sides to make sure that um, the transparent windows are nice and clean. I'm gonna load it up into the sample compartment, close it up, and then I can collect the spectrum. So it's going to prompt me to give it a file name. Make sure that you're saving it into the folder that you want to save it in. Give it a name and make sure you're saving it as a DSW file. And then give it a sample name. Um, name it however you want just to help you keep track of your various samples. Hit OK and then it should start to collect the spectrum. Once the spectrum is collected, um, you can go ahead and make sure that it's saved into the correct folder. So you can see right there. And then um, since we selected this at the beginning when we were setting up our method, we also generated a CSV file in addition to the raw data file. And that's really convenient because that spits out the data in a really convenient and easy way for us to um, process later on. Alternatively, you could save the data all manually um, once again, make sure that you're saving it both as a raw data file, a DSW file, and a CSV file. So you can go ahead and empty out the first sample, dump it out into my imaginary waste beaker, and then what I'll do is I'll take a clean cuvette and load it up with my next sample. But since I don't have uh, another sample, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. So remove the blank uh, from the reference compartment. And since in our case, the blank is just DI water, it's perfectly fine to dump down the sink. And then I'm gonna let it dry out. Then I can go ahead and close the software. And then if I'm the last one using the um, computer, I would also shut it down but since I'm not, I'm gonna leave it on. And then most importantly, I'm gonna turn off the instrument. And that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed.